using computer-aided restitution of hieroglyphic inscriptions as a means to reconstruct ancient Egyptian temples. Ancient Egypt's impressive stone architectural heritage is testimony to the will of an ancient people to use the most precious and durable material to build sacred monuments. No ancient culture, whether Near Eastern or Classical, has built so huge and spectacular monuments as the ancient Egyptians. The Temple of Karnak, just north of Christen de Luxor, stands out as one of the most important and complex religious sites in Egypt. The site, erected in honor of the god Amun-Ra, is probably the biggest monumental pharaonic complex ever built. Although it is one of the country's greatest touristic attractions, many of its buildings have yet to be reconstructed. On the one end, ten of thousands of stone blocks, if not more, lay strewn about the whole site of Karnak. These blocks were originally part of architectural structures that have long since been dismantled, most often than not by the pharaoh themselves. On the other end, Pollution and the ravages of time have done a lot of damage to the buildings, especially to the decoration and texts engraved on the temple walls. One of the chief goals of the permanent French-Egyptian scientific mission, based in Karnak, is not only to safeguard the site, but also to see to it that the buildings are restored to their original glory. A successful strategy has been implemented in order to search for loose blocks across the whole sacred area and then to put them back together. Shrines and courtyards that had been taken apart during pharaonic times have been, in some cases, entirely reassembled. This sort of feat was made possible only through minute examination of the blocks and fragments that made up the monuments to be rebuilt. The people at the French Egyptian center in Karnak have performed this great deed in large part without the help of computers. In recent years, our team within the CAD research group in the School of Architecture of University of Montreal has sought to propose novel methods of computer-aided architectural reconstitution in the field of cultural heritage. The main purpose of this research project is to propose an original way of assisting archaeologists in restoring, by computer means, missing parts of ancient monuments. We believe that, on account of the computer's sorting and generating capacity, it would be advantageous to resort to computer-aided modeling in order to help the search for blocks. Thus, it would be possible to suggest to archaeologists different ways of positioning the blocks. We are seeking to evaluate empirically to what extent it would be feasible to develop a software program enabling the reconstitution of selected part of the Temple of Amun-Ra in a virtual space. In order to implement this software program, we broke down into three main categories the most important features to look for when seeking to determine the initial location of any given block that is found out of place. So, the system we are currently developing is based on three sorts of criteria, namely architecture, iconography, and epigraphy. We will simply introduce the first two criteria, but we will turn our attention mainly to the third one. The first feature is of architectural nature. An important architectural criterion to take into consideration when trying to find out the original location of a misplaced building block is its shape. If the contour of an architectural feature is convex, it may be part of a column shaft. If it is concave, it might belong to a cornice. If the side of a block is slant, it could originally fit into a wall that bore an angle, etc. In order to resort to the computer in the restitution process, it is necessary, first and foremost, to list every single block in a database. Afterwards, one may input different kinds of information, such as data regarding the morphology of the blocks. 
the computer is then able to proceed to thousands of comparisons quickly and efficiently. The blocks can be sorted by size and geometrical form in order to identify those having complementary characteristics. The results of these operations are likely to provide archaeologists with information regarding the position the blocks might have had initially. The second criterion used in order to identify the original position of a loose block is iconographical. Determining the thematic nature and the scale of objects that are etched into the surface of a block go a long way in identifying its former location. In order to provide input to the database, these iconographic elements must be surveyed. Afterwards, by sorting through the listed elements, the computer program can identify blocks on which appear the iconographical elements corresponding to the missing fragment of a given damage wall. The results of this sorting process are liable, once again, to provide archaeologists with more information regarding the position the blocks might have occupied initially. Last but not least, the third decisive factor that enables researchers to fit together blocks is epigraphical. Indeed, Egyptian temples are not only covered with images, but with inscriptions as well. A text carved into any given single building block is very likely to be part of a larger inscription that runs along a whole series of blocks. Therefore, in our endeavor to restore selected parts of the Temple of Amun-Ra, and in order to enable the system to possession the blocks so as to assemble meaningful sequences of hieroglyphs, it is of utmost importance to consider the semantic aspect and not only the geometrical shape of the hieroglyphic sign. The system must understand, so to speak, the inscription appearing on the block in order to be able to suggest various alternate ways of beginning or ending the truncated message. Therefore, this research project focuses on the possibilities of developing a program in such a way as to teach the computer how to decode sequences of hieroglyphic signs. Manifestly, we have here to deal with a language characterized by complex orthographic and grammatical rules, different from those, say, of modern English. For instance, orthography is far more flexible in ancient Egyptian than in Indo-European languages, since the aesthetic arrangement of hieroglyphic signs into groups determined to a large extent the spelling of the words. In order to illustrate this flexibleness, we will comment briefly on two of the most basic rules, the spelling of Egyptian words and the declension of nouns. The spelling of Egyptian words. In ancient Egypt, most hieroglyphs represented a series of sounds. For example, the symbol representing a heart and a wine pipe was pronounced nefer. Since it was made up of three consonants, in this case, N, F, and R, philologists refer to this symbol as triliteral sign. In order to help the reader vocalize this triliteral sign, the scribe could add unilateral signs representing single consonant, that is N, F, and R. These unilateral signs, known as phonetic complements, could be written before after or before and after the triliteral hieroglyphic representing the art and wine pipe. As a result of this, there can be up to five different ways of combining a biliteral sign with its two phonetic complements, and 17 different ways of combining a triliteral sign with its three phonetic complements. Since Egyptian words were in turn usually composed of several bilateral and triliteral signs, the number of ways of spelling a word was further increased. The declension of nouns Although the Egyptian rule for forming plural nouns is consistent, the way in which plurals are transcribed in hieroglyphs is not rigid. In order to form a plural, nouns add the symbol of the quail chick in the word. However, this sign is often omitted in writing. 
A frequent means of making the plural is by adding three short strokes at the end of the word. They can be written horizontally, vertically or grouped, depending on the scribe's preferences and the shape of the surrounding signs. And sometimes dots were used instead of strokes. Furthermore, in cases where a hieroglyphic sign represents an image called pictogram, the sign can be written out three times in order to express the plural. We made use of Scheme, a well-known functional programming language, in order to describe grammatical rules related to number and gender. It is worth mentioning that, contrarily to the rules guiding the spelling of words, dealing with more complex verbal sentences is, at this stage of our project, premature. We are developing a lexicon listing the hieroglyphic words most often found in Middle Egyptian text, and especially those written in Egyptian temples. Since the number of Egyptian words is very large, the user will be able to add new words into the database as he or she sees fit. The lexicon is thus interactive. The system offers the user the possibility of capturing roots of words and inserting them in the lexicon. He or she can do so using either the pictogram or the alphanumeric codes based on the list in Gardiner's Egyptian grammar. For each root, the system automatically generates the different ways of spelling the word. So, the lexicon is structured and implemented as if it were a dictionary able to rewrite itself every time it is consulted. When working on hypothesis of reconstitution, the user, namely the Egyptologist, inputs the truncated message appearing on the blocks of a damaged wall. With the assistance of the lexicon, the system is able not only to decode the truncated message, but also to suggest various alternate ways of beginning or ending the sequence of hieroglyphs. For example, if we add in English this truncated sentence, the program would put forward certain hypotheses in order to complete the sentence. It would assume that an adjective is missing and, by sorting through the lexicon, would suggest several ones beginning with the letter H, such as hungry, happy, healthy, etc. The computer program we are developing interprets the sequence of hieroglyphic signs. At the end of the sorting process, the graphical user interface displays sequences of hieroglyphs liable to complete the truncated message coherently. It is important to emphasize the fact that our computer program is not completely autonomous. A human intervention is required. Indeed, faced with several suggestions generated by the system, the archaeologist must choose from among alternate options. He or she must identify those which are actually adequate to complete the truncated message in a given context. Noteworthy of mention is the fact that this is by no means a system based on artificial intelligence, since the software program cannot produce knowledge nor learn from the user's experiments. It can only interpret and apply the grammatical rules encoded. We are currently working on a case study dealing with the inscription describing the scene caved into the south face of the west massif of the seventh pylon. It shows the large figure of a pharaoh smiting foreign foe with a dagger and, kneeling in front of the king, the enemies who plead in vain for mercy. The main objective of this case study is to verify if the software program we are currently developing is able to provide archaeologists with information regarding possible ways of filling textual lacunies. We are seeking to evaluate to what extent the tool we are implementing would help him or her to restore damaged part of an inscription, so as to eventually recognize loose blocks as formally belonging to a pylon.